Justin Blackie. Enemy of those who make him an enemy. Friend of those who have no friends. Yes, sir. That's Boston Blackie, and he's quite a guy. In just a moment, we'll see him in one of his exciting adventures. But first, a word from our sponsor. Hold it nice and still, friend. Nothing fancy. <laughs> Just goes to show what happens when you spend a quiet evening at home alone. Now, drop the letters back in a draw, friend. Now, sit down. Now, oh, there. You got a name? Hey, wait a minute. I'll bet you are our phantom burglar. That joker who has been looting houses all over the city for months. Am I right? Okay, you don't have to talk to me. The police know how to make guys like you sing real pretty. You mean you can't talk? You're a mute? Uh, that's tough. But you're still in a jam, fella. Uh, I have to turn you over to the police. You understand that, don't you? Job. Just cry for a man of your talent. Not if you want to take it on. We'll forget about the cops. I don't care about most of it, but I hope they find my diamond earrings. Why? A fellow gave them to me. Anybody I know? Could be. You're, uh... Mary Wesley. Yes, you're on the list. See if you can identify any of it. Well, how about you, Blackie? You lose something, too, or just sightseeing? I gather you didn't catch the Phantom Burglar. That's correct. What's this stuff, Junkie threw back? It was found in a rental locker at the bus depot. Here they are, Blackie. Isn't it wonderful? That was the first day he remembered. You know, they go through those lockers and clean them out every 24 hours. Maybe the reason the guy didn't go back for the stuff, there was nothing there he wanted. About two-thirds of the loot is still missing. Oh, uh, Miss Wesley, you'll have to sign some forms. Oh, I'm going to drop in and see Faraday. Meet you down in the car. Right, but well, don't be long. Happy hunting, Sarge. Blackie, Lenora Alden. Boston Blackie, Lenora. How, How do you do? I met Lenora upstairs. Your earrings stolen, too? These were personal papers of great value, but only to me. I'm terrified that people destroy them. Blackie, Lenore was wondering if... Why, of course I will. Get right in. We can drive you any place you want to go. No trouble at all. Mary, what do you say to a baseball game this afternoon? No. No. Blackie, Lenore has a serious problem. Oh, that's too bad. I wish I could help you, but it just so happens I got... I've already told you you would. Well, thanks. Just what special dragon did you ladies have in mind for me? All we want you to do is see a few people. If I could just get word to the burglar, I'd be more than willing to buy back my papers. Well, I suppose I could put the word out on the party line. It might get back to the right party. That's my boy. Blackie, while you get with it, I'll drive Lenore to the bank for her money. I can tell all my cousins, Blackie. Like you said, somebody must have known him. You do that, fam? <laughs> Check, man. <laughs> that phantom is real cool. The horse I can give you, Blackie. It's the next thing up at the fight. Yeah, with this phantom rider. Uh-huh. Well, keep it moving, Ed. Sooner or later, he'll get to the right party and let these deaf, dumb, and blind. Uh -huh. 
Uh, pardon me, sir. Uh, would you pass me the sugar, please? We we'll need some coffee to put that in, won't you, old man? Oh, thank you. I presume you are aware, sir, that there is a city ordinance which uh, prohibits soliciting. But you know, uh, you appeal to me as a man who knows when to break the law. Well, you're a good judge of character. Oh, yes, yes, indeed I am. There's none better at packing a jewelry. Uh, perhaps I should have used the word was because I'm no longer practicing my profession. Uh, my request. Well, not exactly present on the glass, but uh, I thank you just the same. <laughs> not at all. Mm. Tell me, what profession are you in? Well, sir, I can assure you that it isn't burglary. That's too bad. I have an interest in burglar. Oh? As a hobby. Oh, I see. Well, I number several burglars among my acquaintances, uh, gentlemen that you really should know. And, of course, maybe I could be of some assistance to you, that is, if you're sufficiently interested. I mean, in terms of dollars and cents. To me, it's just a hobby. Yeah, don't tackle with me, sir. If you want to do business with me, it will be on my terms and not at all. You know the man I want to see? You might pass this on to me. I might. But this uh, service will be of some special value, sir. To him, maybe. To me, it's worth a hot dog and a cup of coffee. Nothing more. I want $50. This is information that you can get nowhere else. Now, unless I get $50, sir, I shall not lift a finger. You got busted on your chin, counselor. Wipe it off with this. Here are your keys. How'd you make out with the Phantom? I did everything but send spirit messages. If he doesn't answer, there's nothing I can do. Well, where's Lenore? I left her at her apartment after she picked up the $500. Oh, um, Blackie, I hope you aren't too mad at me for getting you into this. You're forgiven. I, I have to admit, I was a little miffed when you first brought the subject up. A little bored with Lenore's big, fat problem. But then I met the most interesting old character down on Main Street. Broken down this part of turning. What a character. Yes, this is Austin Blackie. Hackney Golf Course, 3 o'clock. Well, how will I know you from a golf ball? Wear a flower in your lapel. Didn't say what color. Watch these days. Hey, your ball's in the crop. You ought to teach me that shot.
a hundred. It's all profit. Those papers are no good to anyone except the owner. Look, the lie didn't cost you. Act nonchalant, that cop will go away. This Alden will go 500 bucks. That's all she's got. Hey, you! Stop! Stop or I'll shoot! at his leg. You heard me to tell him to stop. You got him in the leg. The way he fell. Did he hurt bad? Yeah. Par for the course. Well, that was just a sample of the thrills coming your way when we return in just a moment for part two of our Boston Blackie adventure. Oh, thanks. First motor cages failed to excite me. I don't read any further. Good idea. The waiter's cafe where I met the counselor told me the old boy's name was Madison. This down the street is the Boxford Hotel. Did you know where Lenora's documents are? I don't know. But this guy, Bill Rainey, didn't strike me as the type who would trust many people. I'm almost positive that Madison set up that meeting. It isn't much of a lead, but it's the best we've got. Lloyd Edwards, room 219. Writes a nice hand. Mary, find a seat and try to look like you live here. Whatever you say, lover boy. Who knocked? Room service. in this hobble? That's a poor joke, sir. I apologize. Mm, Seven dollars a week, cash in advance. Five years ago, I occupied a six-room apartment at four hundred dollars a month. And all because of a... Oh, pardon me. Sit down, sir. Oh, thank you. And thanks for delivering my message to Bill Rainey. Yes. Well, I hope he was better paid for his trouble. It all depends how you look at it, I guess. Do you know him well? Hmm. He had a room here from time to time. Now? Know where he keeps his loot? Would I be here, sir, if I did? Why, counselor, dealing in stolen goods is a felony. All I need is one good break, sir. I'm not a bit interested in what it is or where it comes from. And I don't care, sir, who gets hurt in the process. You know, I believe you. Somebody tipped off the police about Bill. Is he in jail? If so, I'll offer him free legal advice. He's in the morgue with a bullet hole in his knee and a broken neck. He didn't have Miss Ogren's papers on him when he was found. If you could lay your hands on him now, it's worth 200 bucks to you. 200? That wouldn't do me a bit of good, sir. I'll need at least 5,000, enough to get off a of skid row. Get myself some good clothes, an automobile, a good address, and... The lady can go 500. That's her seal. Okay, counselor. $500 is a lot of money. That's more than you'll end up with. You've made your offer, sir. I have no papers for sale. I'll not detain you any longer. I, uh, before you leave, I humble myself to the point of asking the loan of, uh, ten cents, if you don't mind. Thank you, sir. I'll go as far as the lobby with you. <coughs> Hey, lover boy, where are you going is so important. You've got to learn to relax, you'll get ulcers. Ain't that right, Pop? Mm, well, of course, every man to his own taste here. Got a cigarette for a gal? Yeah, here, 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 here. Uh, keep the whole pack, sugar. It's the best I can do for you. Pretty boys give me a pain. They're only good to look at, anyway. Is that pop? Well, 
Thank you. It's a habit I should like to acquire again. Thank you. Get them over, please. I don't want to use any names over the telephone, but I believe I have some information that would be of considerable interest to you. Yes. I suggest a meeting between us at the earliest possible moment. Well, come on over here. Okay, you say where. Uh, I'll find a place. What time? Okay, you got a date, mister. You know who that was, Miss Algren? Who? Well, it wasn't your friend Boston Blackie. That was a man who wants to talk a deal for those papers. <laughs> your bluff didn't work, honey. I knew you didn't have him when you started dropping Blackie's name. Blackie, it worked. Oh, just a minute, I'm reading the last chapter for you. It's the wrong one. How'd you like my act? Wasn't that pretty good? Sensational. Of course. I don't know who he called. He didn't use any names, but he told them he had something to sell. You think it was Leonora's document? Why, of course. But who else would want to buy them? I don't know, but me and our... Look, Mary, what do you know about this girl? I mean, really. This seems to be a very interesting can of beans we open. Could be spiked with tomate, too. I don't understand what you mean, Black. Well, sum it up. Some mysterious papers are missing. Leonor says there's worth 500 bucks to her because she can't raise any more dough. Yet some people are talking 10 or 20 times that much. Mm, what do you think we should do? Well, where is Madison going to meet this contact, and when? in an hour at the third anti-aircraft gun in the Penny Arcade. But, Blackie, if you don't think we should go... We'll not eavesdrop on a conversation here. It is kind of exposed. Uh, let's watch from over there. Oh, what, he isn't enough, Mary. Madison's too smart to have the papers on him. We gotta hear what the... How much time we got? 40 minutes, anyway. Roger! The uh, details as to where I got this information, sir, are irrelevant and immaterial. The fact remains that I have them, they're for sale. I already have one buyer, a Miss Lenore Algren. Look, you cheap bum. She didn't offer you that much and you know it. I'll consider $1,000 adequate damages for that insult, sir. Over and above, of course, any amount that we agree on. Uh, I ought to beat it out here. Well, you're being just a little bit childish, aren't you, Mr. Strelow? I'll give you exactly three minutes to think the whole thing over. Then the auction is closed. The information goes to the highest bidder, Miss Alwyn. to be settled in cash. Okay, okay. I'll have to go to a bank. Let's get out of here. Good. The music may be lousy, but I can hardly wait to hear the lyrics. guy, friend, but I've been pushed far enough for one day. You were trying to get the letters from that shyster. He told me that. Now, with Rainy dead, only two people knew where to look for him. You and Madison. Where? Don't ride me, boy. I'd as soon bend this iron across your skull as not. Are you going to hand over those papers? I haven't got them. 
You heard me, Cookie. I gave him every chance. He's got nobody to blame but himself. Let's have a little mood music to cover up the noise of this party. actually have the documents, Mr. Strelo. I have the information to whip Hempstead 5121. Yeah? What's that supposed to mean? It is a telephone number of which the late and elusive Mr. Rainey assured me would lead to the documents. I have ascertained it to be a public telephone booth in a bus terminal, a place abounding in rental lockers. Now, surely that suggests something to you, Mr. Strelo. Okay. We'll take a look. But I'm paying for letters, not phone numbers. All right, on your feet. I gather it was the wrong number. Don't make me laugh. Got a split lip. That's no lie. Well, it just so happens I haven't got the letters either. What'd you find in the phone booth? A phone. Did you look for the locker key? Well, Madison must be playing both sides of the street or that key is still there. Mary, shine up your magnifying glass. We're going to have a look. What about him? He'll be all right. We'll keep him in the closet here. Oh, wait. If you find those letters, I'll top Algren's highest bid. Bus number 12, now loading at ramp two. Passengers Maybe you think it is wrong. Look, Mary, we have to assume that the letters are in a rental locker, right? Right. Now, what Rainey was actually selling weren't letters, but a locker key. Right. The key wasn't on Rainey when he was killed, so he must have put it someplace where the purchaser could lay his hands on it. Now, he assured Madison that this phone booth was the key to the key. Right. Wrong. It ain't here. What are we going to do? Oh, that's easy. I'm going to give you a dime. You're going to call up Leonore and tell her we struck out. Oh, Blackie, I can't. Look, Mary, we're stalled. We're at the end of the line. We haven't a thing to go on. Got a good fight, but we lost. Come on, you good girl. Line's busy. Keep darling. Got another time? Well, that's not a slot machine. Break the connection. Well, I did. Nothing happened. Let me see. Mary, give me a hairpin. Black, it's only a dime. The old stuffed coin box routine. Four dimes and a, and a key. All What's the number on the key? Three, two, nine. Fresno and San Francisco. Your boss is now loading. Come through your wooden head of daddy. Black it! Passengers to board bus leaving immediately for San Fernando, Bakersfield, and Valley Point. Chris Madison, he's going for the bus. understand Madison's actions and Rainey's too, of course. $500 was probably a lot of money to them, but this other man, uh... Strello? Yes. How in the world did he get involved with them? He has an explanation. Of course, I don't know how much truth is in it, but he tells me he's been paying you off $100 a week for over a year. Yeah. That's ridiculous. No, it's blackmail. I'm no cop, but uh, since I did recover your letters, don't you think you ought to prove to me that Strelo isn't telling the truth? I don't know what you mean. Well, uh, open them up and show them to me. Here, I'll help you. Go ahead. Try to prove something. I just did. That Strelo was telling the truth. 
Miss Alwyn, you've just burned up a stack of old traffic tickets. I don't believe it. It's a cheap trick. Of course, I could have opened this package up myself. But I was taught never to read other people's mail. I'll leave it to the police. That's who's ringing your doorbell now. <laughs> 